think about what it means to be on a diet and what macronutrients you're eating and which ones you're not. And then we'll go from there and I'll try to explain how this all works. So you've all f heard about the obesity epidemic. Here are the numbers. This is the, these, these are the NHANES database body mass index. Everybody knows what that is now. Histograms, marching ever rightward as time has gone on. This was what was projected for 2008 in blue. We had so far exceeded and surpassed, this is not even funny, this was from 2003. The reason I show this is not just to show that the obese are getting obeser, of course that's true, but in fact the entire curve has shifted. We all weigh 25 pounds more today than we did 25 years ago, all of us. Now, it is often said that obesity is the ultimate interaction between genetics and environment. And Dr. Christian Vase, who's sitting in the back of the room, will be talking to you next week about the genetic component, which I am also very interested in. But having said that, our genetic pool did not change in the last 30 years. But boy, oh boy, has our environment sure changed. Okay? So tonight, we're going to talk about the environment rather than genes. Okay? Now, in order to talk about the environment, we need to talk about what is obesity. And of course, you're all familiar with the basic concept of the first law of thermodynamics, which states that the total energy inside a closed system remains constant. Now, in human terms, the standard interpretation of this law is the following. If you eat it, you better burn it, or you're going to store it. Now, who here believes that? Oh, come on, you all do. Okay. I used to believe that. I don't anymore. I think that's a mistake. I think that is the biggest mistake, and that is the uh, phenomenon I'm going to try to debunk over the course of the, uh, over the next hour, because I think there's another way to state the law, okay, which is much more relevant and much more to the point. Before I get there, of course, if you believe that, these are the two problems, right? Calories in, calories out. Two behaviors, right? Gluttony and sloth. After all, you see anybody on the street, oh, he's a glutton and a sloth, that's all there is to it. You know, Tommy Thompson said it on the TV show, we just eat too damn much, right? Well, you know, if that were the case, how did the Japanese do this? Why are they doing bariatric surgery on children at Tokyo Children's Hospital today? Why are the Chinese? Why are the Koreans? Why are the Australians? I mean, you know, these, all these countries who've adopted our diet all suffer now from the same problem. And we're going to get even further in a minute. Okay? There's another way to state this first law. Okay? And that is, if you're going to store it, that is biochemical forces that drive energy storage, and we'll talk about what they are in a few minutes, and you expect to burn it, that is, normal energy expenditure for normal quality of life. Because energy expenditure and quality of life are the same thing. Things that make your energy expenditure go up make you feel good like ephedrine, it's off the market, coffee for two hours, then you need another hit like me, things that make your energy expenditure go down, like starvation, hypothyroidism, make you feel lousy. Okay? And how many calories you burn and how good you feel are synonymous. So if you're going to store it, that is an obligate weight gain set up by a biochemical process, and you expect to burn it, that is normal energy expenditure for normal quality of life, then you're going to have to eat it. And now, all of a sudden, these two behaviors, the gluttony and the sloth, are actually secondary to a biochemical process, which is primary. And that's a different way to think about the process. And it also alleviates the obese person from being the perpetrator, but rather the victim, which is how obese people really feel. Because no one chooses to be obese. Certainly no child chooses to be obese. Oh, you say, oh yeah, sure, I know some adults who don't care. You know, Rossini, the famous composer, you know, La Gaza Larga, Marriage of Figure and all that, he retired at age 37 to a lifetime of gastronomic debauchery, okay? Maybe he chose to be obese, okay? But the kids I take care of in uh, obesity clinic do not choose to be obese, 